So here I'm going to look at the final automat again, except except in this case I'm going to go through a past leave insert past paper question which came up in 2017, question eight, and it starts by you having to prove the amortization formula. Okay. Um, the basis for this proof is the fact that the present value of our loan is equal to the sum of the present value of the payment. Okay, so the amount that has to be paid back on a regular basis, A, if I divide that by the interest rate, I get the present value of that money. So think about this in the old case where F was just equal to A. So F is our future value and A is the amount that has to be paid back. And we know that from the log tables, P is equal to F over one plus I to the power of T. So in the same instance then, P is equal to A over 1 plus I to the T, where A is the amount that has to be paid back, and P is the present value of that amount that will be paid back at some time in the future. So let's think about the present value of the loan. P is equal to the amount that has to be paid back over the interest for the first length of time, plus the amount that has to be paid back over the interest for the second period of time, plus the amount that has to be paid back, or the future value, over th the third interest rate, all the way up until the end of the period of time that you're going to pay back the loan or the mortgage. So we have the present value of the loan, which I've called P there. That present value is equal to this, okay, is going to be equal to the sum of the payments over the interest rate because if we want the present value of the loan well we need to know the present value of each of the payments that are going to be made on in regular consistent amounts so the first thing actually I'm going to do here is I'm going to rearrange this right that just might be a little bit easier to explain so I'm going to rearrange this so start off with a outside of 1 plus i to the power of t plus a outside of 1 plus i to the t minus 1 all the way to a outside of 1 plus i squared plus a outside of 1 plus i to the power of 1. Okay, so you wouldn't need to add in this step. I'm just doing it just to, for explanatory purposes. So all I've done is taken that and put it to the start, taking the preceding one there and put it there and put these then at the end, etc, etc. All right, just to tidy that up. Um, now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 plus i to the t. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of my denominators essentially on the right-hand side. If I multiply the left-hand side by 1 plus i to the t, I'm left with p instead of 1 plus i to the power of t is equal to. Well, if I multiply that by that, I'm just left with a plus a outside of 1 plus i plus a outside of 1 plus i squared plus all the way up to a outside of 1, 1 plus i to the t minus 1. So now hopefully what you'll see is this part here becomes a geometric sequence. So the geometric sequence starts with my first term a equal to a, which is there, that's term 1. This is term 2. Well, to get from term 1 to term 2, I need to multiply it by 1 plus i. So or here is 1 plus i. And I know that if I'm trying to add up a geometric sequence, well, the formula is Sn is equal to a outside of or to the power of n minus 1, all over or minus 1. So my right-hand side there is going to be equal to a outside of or, which is 1 plus i, to the power of n. Well, n here was just t, because overall there are t terms in the sequence. That is going to be that minus 1 all over or minus 1. So or minus 1 is going to be 1 plus i minus 1, which is just left with i. So overall, what we have is the left-hand side is equal to this. The right-hand side is equal to that. So that's equal to p instead of 1 plus i to the power of t, like that. And now what happens is... All I need to do to isolate A, I need to divide both sides by 1 plus I to the power of T minus 1 and multiply both sides by I and I'm left with A equals P instead of 1 plus I 
to the power of t times i over 1 plus i to the power of t minus 1. Okay, so we're able to work out our regular repayment amount. So that is the proof of the amortization formula. So it's found by using the sum of a geometric sequence formula.